Joining us now is UBS Equity Research Analyst Erica Nigerian. Erica, um, regionals in one bucket and then what we used to call the money center banks or now the SIFI banks in another. I mean, is it fair to sort of characterize it that way? Sure, and I, I would add another bucket to it, right? You have the super regionals, um, and you have the regionals that are under $100 billion in assets that don't go through regular stress testing for either credit or liquidity, right? And I, I think those are going to be very different buckets. I think, to your point, regulation is already tight with the money center banks. I think for re the regionals, it's the potential for regulatory tightening is coming, um, which could impact ultimate returns. And I think that the funding squeeze and ultimately tighter regulation coming for the smaller banks under $100 billion in assets could also be even more acute in terms of pressure and ROEs. And we think that potentially could lead to more consolidation in the small bank space. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of where the market seems to be focused. Not as much, we all hope, on any actual failures, but simply on their earnings power, given that rise in funding costs. So what do you, and how much have you been taking down your numbers, for example, for any number of these regional and smaller regional banks? Yeah, so we're already well below consensus in terms of our estimates for um, regional banks because not only do we see continued funding squeeze, um, which will impact net interest income, but we also see that we've essentially written a conclusion on a recession in the United States. And that will lead to credit contraction, which is never a good thing for an economy. And it'll also lead to higher credit losses, um, especially in um, places like commercial real estate, subprime consumer. Erica, we were just mentioning some regulatory analysis today that says there's minimal appetite in Congress to do much of anything regarding regulation on regionals. Is that, wouldn't that be a positive for uh, the equity or, or maybe the street wants more safeguards uh, to make sure that uh, we don't want we don't find ourselves in similar situations in the future. Uh, there may be limited appetite in Congress, but keep in mind that the regulatory bodies have already been talking about pushing down some of these GSIB rules to the regional banks. For example, there's something called total loss absorbing capacity, where there is a lot of talk from Washington, from the regulators, not Congress, you know, to push that down to some of the regional banks. But, you know, at the end of the day, just I just wanted to take a step back, right? So... I think particularly the super regional banks that I cover, they're going to be able to withstand future tighter regulation with some hit to ROE, but will generally still be quite profitable. So I wanted to make sure that the potential regulatory situation, you know, is not over exaggerated, over exaggerated. Secondarily, right, between now and rulemaking, the, these banks can generate a lot of capital. Um, and a lot of liquidity on their balance sheet. And so their positioning could look very different from, you know, the fourth quarter, which is the most recent disclosures we have. Um, and, you know, if we fast forward two years when, you know, new rules could be in place from regulators. 